Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? See, I had this problem seven years ago. No one heard me. We're going to do it better this time around. Thank you, Mr. Cho. I really appreciate you having me here today. It's a great honor. Um, I probably couldn't make words about myself better than he just gave me, so I really appreciate you making me look good. My name is Dominic Panikel. I graduated QHST in 2007, and I really wish this podium was turned the other way around because this is really intended for the graduates behind me. After high school, I attended Rutgers University and now serve as city council member Rory Lansman's chief of staff. When Mr. Cho asked me to speak at the Queens High School of Teaching graduation, I felt both honored and completely underqualified. What could I possibly say that would be valuable to a class of graduating seniors? What advice would I have to share just seven years after my own graduation? And then it hit me. In the last several years, both through college and my professional life, I've often thought back to my own time here and how much of what I learned has informed me. So I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate with you all today and share some advice that I would have wanted to hear myself when I was sitting here. For me, the Queens High School of Teaching was an incredible place. The teachers were caring, the administration was engaged, and the community of students were supportive. The education that you've had here, has both in and outside of the classroom, is world class and prepared you for the next step. We don't get to say thank you enough so before going any further, I just want to thank all of you. I was going to start my own business. But like so many of my peers, my plans changed. I ended up taking several government and political internships in college and found myself more and more interested in public service. Instead of playing it safe and sticking to my original plan, I went out on a limb and these opportunities and gave it my all. There were plenty of times when I could have backed down because I was scared of failing. But I pushed through. When I graduated from college, I was deciding between two opportunities. The first was a position as a political consultant in Washington, D.C., at a place that I had interned for while I was in college. And the second was an unpaid internship for a local assemblyman, Rory Lansman. I chose the second. It was certainly not the more glamorous choice. And I'm sure my parents were thrilled to have me back at home, freeloading off of them again. But because I knew it would be more challenging and would pose more difficulty for me, but make the success that much more valuable, I decided to go down that path. Soon after interning, I was brought onto staff, and within six months, I was promoted to chief of staff. Which brings me to my next piece of advice. Number two, commit yourself and take charge. You'll only be successful if you give something a shot, even if you don't succeed you'll be better for trying. Disappointment is both acceptable and expected. You shouldn't make it that easy for yourself. You create your own luck. It's easy to look at other people's successes and point to the hints of fortune that they have been granted. But the truth is, if you work hard, if you take your work seriously, things will work out. It may not work out exactly the way you intended or hoped, but it will. Go to all your college classes. Sleeping in is nice, laziness is comfortable, and the independence is liberating. But you should do more than just read and study the bare minimum to pass the exam and the course. You should become a more knowledgeable person. Otherwise, you will walk away with a diploma, but you will not get any smarter. Take your work seriously. It stays with you. Seriously. Number three. Leave your judgment and preconceived notions in high school. All those things that make you cool, uncool, popular, unpopular, become less and less relevant in the moments you leave this auditorium. I walked onto the Rutgers campus in 2007, not knowing a single person. Just a few months after leaving the Queens High School of Teaching, where it felt like I knew everyone. But those people on campus were going through changes in their life, just like I was. I became involved, got to know people. It was not about being cool. It was simply about finding the group of people that I enjoyed spending time with. Open your mind to new people. 
These people you never would have paid attention to before, give them a shot. You never know what someone else is going through. Number four, thank your family. They work hard to get you where you are today. Before you go out and celebrate with your friends tonight, spend some time with your parents. It's their day too. Got really quiet behind me. <laughs> Number five. There are people who you thought would be your closest friends forever that will not be. But that is truly okay. Circumstances often can draw people together, but time and distance can change that. Some of those relationships will feel like nothing has changed during the rare but significant reunions, and that's great. But for the ones that you have lost, it is important to not dwell on that change, but rather to appreciate the new relationships that you have made and the ones that you have kept, and recall with fondness the good times that you shared with the people in years display, which brought us closest together. It's strange to think about it now, but appreciate those times as well. Number seven, spend your summers wisely. Every single summer, have fun, but also do something that you will learn from. Either take an internship or do classes. If you can, take the opportunity that will provide you the most experience and education, not just the one that pays you or what pays you the most. In 2008, I interned for Congressman Gary Ackerman. At that internship, I met Kevin Kim, who proceeded to run for the city council the next year. I interned on that campaign. The summer after that, I interned for a political consulting firm that I had mentioned earlier that sought me for an interview just because they saw Kevin's name on my resume. I developed relationships through all of these experiences and they each guided my thinking on the career. But the grand sum of those three summers was zero dollars. Number eight, don't take yourself so seriously. Life is pretty simple. Truth is, Mom and Dad were right about most things. Learn from them. You'll appreciate them more and more as time passes. Don't spend all your waking moments on your phone. Your sidekick turned Blackberry, turned Android, turned iPhone. Your sidekick turned Blackberry, turned Android, turned iPhone is fun, and it's nice to be able to text constantly, but there are people to meet, there are conversations to be had, there are sites to appreciate, plus, you'll have plenty of years to be glued to your phone after you graduate. So I'll close with this. For the slackers, you get to start again tomorrow. Make it count. To the overachievers, keep pressing on the gas. And to all, have fun, take a lot of pictures, soak it in, and do good and do right. Congratulations to the class of 2014. That's QHSD class of 2007 graduate, Dominic Panikow.